Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are making this. It is a uh, subs counter so I can count how many subscribers on the channels that I have. Now I made one a while ago. Uh, it was a block of wood where you could actually see through the wood. It was an interesting idea, but it was one of those things that would be a cool idea but didn't really come out very well. And I've been wanting to do this for a long time since then. So I finally got around to making this with some one-way glass and I'm really, really happy now that I can see my channels on here in one place. So let's dive in and see how exactly we go about making this. And for this video, we're gonna start off with some white oak and an elect electric board. Oh, okay, this is different. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of fun here today because this is a little bit of electronics and I did do all the soldering and programming on this, but don't let that scare you off. It's actually really, really simple. I have links down below that show you how you can do this yourself. And it only costs a few bucks and it's a lot of fun to learn a new topic. We're starting with a uh, one-way glass. It's mirror on one side and you can see through the other side if it is um, clear. Originally, I wanted to inset it into this one inch thick piece of white oak and I thought that would be like, a frameless holder for for it. Uh, I found out later I need to make it a little larger, but we'll be working on the, the frame that will go around this later. So we're starting off with some white oak. Uh, want to? This is just an extra scrap I had, I think from the bed project, and I wanted to square it all up and make sure it was all nice and true so that I can measure off of this, um, because I needed to cut it down to a size that was um, two inches wider and two inches longer than the piece of uh, two-way glass that I had. Uh, for the two-way glass, I actually went to a local glass supplier and bought that. You can get it on Amazon, but it ends up costing way, way more online most of the time for the shipping and all, and uh, the, the glass store I bought it at was like eight bucks and they even cut it to size for me. Um, so look around for a local glass store and they will be able to supply it very easily. So we can cut this down to be two inches larger in both directions than the glass we have. And then after cutting it down, we can flatten it out and smooth it out. Uh, the next thing I need to do is actually inset the glass into the panel. And I want to inset it so that there is only uh, a little bit less than a quarter inch of material in between the outside of the glass and the front of the frame. So I'm going to need to basically make a huge mortise that covers the entire board. Um, and this was my original idea just to inset the glass down into it and not have a frame on it and make it look a little bit different and a little bit special. Um, I found out I have to change that in the future, but that's one of the great things about making your own plans and playing around with things. Things change, and as long as you learn to be flexible with that and move around, it is amazing what you can what you can get done. So what I'm going to do is I outlined where the glass is, and I made the outline a little bit larger than the glass, so there's a little bit of play in it. And I went all the way around, but then I left these two strips in the middle. So I'm basically doing exactly what I did for the sharpening uh, bay that I have where I can put the sharpening plates into. The reason I'm leaving these strips in the middle is they allow me to have a reference surface for a router plane so I can flatten out the bottom and make it perfectly flat all the way across. So I'll chop in around the perimeter of these and then pair back to the line and then chop down and pair back to the line, chop down and pair back to the line, chop down and pair back to the line. Uh, it takes a little bit of work, but this whole panel, I think, ended up taking me uh, about 35, 40 minutes to go down to depth. And it worked out pretty well. I took it down close to the depth I wanted, but I didn't take it down all the way to depth. I stopped just a hair short. And that way I could then bring in the router plane and then take it down the rest of the way. You see I left these dividers here in the middle so I could support the router plane on that and I can get right up to the edge. That uh, gave me a little bit more strength. Then for the very corners I could come in and clean them up with a chisel and then chop down to that very last little bit to get it down to depth. And this was uh, surprisingly easy. Anytime you can bring out the router, it's a fun time, it's an easy time, and it's incredibly enjoyable. Once we've done that, we can then bust out these middle sections, and it's relatively easy to flatten these out with a chisel and card scraper. Uh, just make sure when you're busting them out, you don't go too far on one of the ends. <laughs> um, also, you have to just make sure you're reading the grain right. If the grain dives off, you want to make sure you plane with the grain so that you don't also dive off and chip deeper on the far side. Don't ask me how I know that, <laughs> but it comes out pretty well. You'll see the stabbing motion where I have one hand on the blade and one hand on the handle. That allows you to get very accurate and actually turn a chisel into a plane, um, and you can you can smooth out a surface really easily. I'm bringing a, bring in the card scraper into the last little bit. Make sure that the bottom is nice and flat. I want the bottom to be perfectly flat so when the glass sits on it, it's met it's met, it's mated well. It's mated well. There's the word I'm looking for. It's mated well with the the glass itself, and I have a nice even seam all the way around. Now, when I put the glass in the first time, I realized that the glass kind of rocked back to, back and forth, 
and it wasn't quite as flat as I was looking at. And I noticed that the ridges that I took out of the middle, I didn't take them down quite as far as I, I thought. They looked flat, but there ended up being a little bit of a high spot in the middle. So I could use a straight edge to come back in and make sure I take those ridges all the way down to nice and flat and true. And then the glass goes in and it sits fairly flat or flat enough for what I need. Now we can flip it over and do some carving. I found a pattern online. I just searched for Celtic weave border and you come up with hundreds of them. And I found one that was about the right size and then I scaled the image to fit what I wanted. And that allowed me to then paste on a border. I used a simple glue stick to adhere it down and it holds it really well and makes it relatively easy to come off and it doesn't, uh, doesn't peel up in between. I'm using a simple V tool, keeping it sharp about every five, six minutes, giving it a quick strop and then going back to work. Um, the V tool, I'll try and leave a link to that down below, is one of the easiest ways to learn to carve. Um, anyone can pick up one of these in five or six minutes do this carving. So don't let this frighten you. It is surprisingly easy. And I've taught uh, you know kids to come along and do this in just a couple minutes. If you can moderately follow a line with a pencil, you can do this kind of carving. And it is incredibly rewarding to see this come to life. Down at the bottom, I also had a little bit extra space. Uh, so I decided to put in some lettering. Uh, this, the total on the the carving for this plate ended up uh, I think it was about an hour hour and 15 minutes or so and I wanted to put something down on the bottom that was a little bit different something that was just a reminder of what this is for so people I serve um, the numbers aren't just numbers they are people who I've built relationships with and uh, I, I really want to embody that on this channel and help people grow and learn next thing I wanted to do is put in the logos so I, I printed out my logos about the size I was expecting and then played around with the spacing. Uh, you'll notice that I have three logos I'll carve into this, but there's enough space in the bottom for a fourth one. And I'll let you wonder what that is all about. <laughs> then as just as before, we're going to grab the glue stick, glue those down, and then we can carve these in. Um, I had to modify my Wizards News logo a little bit uh, because I, the, the lettering at the bottom was just a bit too small for me to accurately carve. So rather than writing out the words Wizards News, I wrote out WN. And uh, from that... One, two, three. Oh, yeah, I do have an extra space for one. I wonder what's up with that. I'm <laughs> Now for the other two on Wood by Right and Wood by Right 2, I was thinking about doing one with the regular logo and one with a 2 underneath it or putting a 2 and a 1 and then I just realized, wait a second, uh, do I really need to differentiate these? One of these has a very large subscriber count and the other one does not. Um, so I'm just going to leave them that way. <laughs> so uh, I ended up just making both of the logos the exact same thing. If you ever tried to carve a circle, this is probably one of the hardest things and one of the tips I would give you is take it slow. Small hits, small impacts. The, sl the smaller you move, the less of a chance you're going to deviate. So the slower you can go, the better your circle is going to be and the cleaner it looks. For doing the letters, you just dive in at one end, lift the handle high, dive in, and once you get down to depth, then you lower the handle down to the depth. The angle of the handle determines the depth of your cut. Once we scrape all that off, now we can start with the electronics that we made earlier. Uh, what I wanted to do was actually shape out exact sizes of masking tape so I could put those onto the glass or onto the panel and I could judge where the numbers will actually be on the panel. Now that I had these exact sizes, I could lay those out on the panel and then figure out the window that I wanted through the panel to the, the one-sided glass. And so I laid that all out, and as was normal with me, I like to put bevels in the corners so we're able to, to space those out and, and make them look pretty. Now the question is, how do we cut out this middle? And for that, I actually have a scroll saw now. And if you don't have that, you can use a fret saw or a coping saw. I have a whole bunch of videos using that. Uh, it goes relatively easily. It's just if you have a big scroll saw like this, why not use it? Because these are honestly a lot of fun. Uh, I wish that I had uh, restored one of these a while ago. But if you want to see that, I have a whole series of videos on restoring the scroll saw and, and building it up. It is a, 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 an incredibly fun tool to play with. And just, uh, yeah. <laughs> So now that we have that done, we can bring it right back to the line with a set of files, um, keeping it close and, and making it look pretty. And it's really kind of cool when you actually open up the ingrain of the white oak. I've always loved the look of white, you know, white oak ingrain. And I'm just going to um, break the edges a little bit with a knife and clean it up with a card scraper. And there is our window. Now, at this point, I was just going to put the glass in and mount the electronics, but then I realized the electronics were sticking out farther than I wanted them to. So I needed to mount a frame around this to then 
push the whole thing out a little farther from the window. So I grabbed some scrap lumber that I had, and uh, this was uh, what three quarter by inch and a half ish boards. And then I plowed a line for this whole frame to fit into. Now, if I originally, if I was going to do this, I would have just started with a quarter inch thick board rather than recessing the whole backside in. Uh, but since I have this, now that means the groove has to be three quarter inch for it to fit into the board. Now that I have a groove that will work, we can put it in all the way. One tip when using a 45 or something like that, if you're running into the fence in the bench, just put another board underneath to lift the work up a little bit, and now the fence won't run into the bench underneath. And then we're going to chamfer the edges because, you know, this is wood by right, and I like chamfers. <laughs> uh, just using a block plane, I think it was like 20-some passes on each corner to give it a decent chamfer. Use some 400-grit sandpaper to break all of the fuzzing from the plow plane. And uh, and now I have my, my, trim, my trim panel that we can turn into molding that goes around this. Now, all of the corners, I'm just going to uh, butt glue together the 45s. Um, I have a 45-degree slot in my board that gets me really, really close, and then I can come in with a plane and detail them. Uh, if you have a shooting board with a 45-degree slot, it makes that very easy so that you can uh, um, just plane them to the angle you want. Uh, but I, I prefer to cut them close and then eyeball them. Cool and bring them into uh, 45. Uh, that way I can lay them together and make sure that they fit. Uh, if you don't have a, a framing clamp, it is really a good thing to get, especially if you're ever doing any boxes or small frames. It goes around and then will clamp onto each corner. Makes it very, very easy. I'll try and leave a link to one of those down below as well. Use a, uh, a small glue brush. Make sure you get glue on all sides. Try not to get too much on the front so you don't have squeeze out coming out onto the front and uh, get it onto all sides, especially heavy on the corners. Um, you want to make sure that the, the glue, the corners do have a little bit of squeeze out because there aren't, I'm not going to be putting any splines in here. It's just going to be rough glue to rough glue. Now there is a little bit of problem with expansion and contraction on this. It would possibly push out the sides, but as I have this in an air conditioned shop, um, it's really not going to be that much of an issue. Next thing we want to do is hot glue on the electronics. I'm just going to hot glue them in place onto the back of the glass. That way they don't move around and it holds the, uh, the counter flush up against the glass. And then we can plug in the whole thing and watch for all the numbers to come out. Hee, happiness. Oh, look, there's all the subscriber numbers. And then for the next thing, we need to detail this. I just use a chisel to clean up all the corners, bring all the chamfers in together. And if you ever have a corner that doesn't quite meet, you can use the backside of the chisel to burnish those corners down together. And it pushes the fibers down into each other and you get a really nice seamless look. Uh, works, works surprisingly well. Spend a little bit of time and enjoy the little curls. Happiness. <laughs> Might want to finish it up with a little bit of uh, sandpaper so that the, uh, the linseed oil will soak into the wood a little bit farther. I'm going to be using some homemade boiled linseed oil. This is uh, stuff that I made myself, not stuff I've gotten from the store, so it's okay to use with your hands. And then we can wipe off all the excess, add some paste wax, polish it down, and we're almost ready for hardware. I need a spot for the cable to come out of the bottom so I can plug this in. And then we need to pin this in place. I was looking for glazing spikes and I could not find them anywhere, so I had to use a couple nails to hold the glass in place. Add on a little picture hanger, and it's basically done and ready to go. We can hang it up, plug it in, and take it for a test drive. So this is uh, this was a, a fun one. I've, I've been wanting to do this for almost a year now since ever I made that last block, and I'm very, very happy with how this came out. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, playing with it for many years to come and maybe adding another channel to it. So I hope you like this, and I'd love to hear your ideas. This was a fun one. So there you go. I am I'm really happy with how this this is this is exactly what I've been wanting, um, and this is kind of a way that I can I can remind myself that these are the people who like what I'm doing, and because of that, I need to actually keep putting out content that uh, the people like. So I hope you like that. Um, and this is uh, this is kind of a, a fun way to play with two sides of me. I do a lot of electronics and fun things with that, as well as mixing in the woodworking and the carving and kind of the, that Celtic nature feel. So. I am, I'm really happy with how it came out and I hope you like it as well. Now if you want to see more about the electronics themselves, I'll have a link to a video down below where another
another channel actually goes through details of how to make these and put them together. They're really simple. If you can solder a few pins um, and pro basically plug them into a computer, you can put the information on them and create one of these for yourself. Um, so there's a lot more information on there. If you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down below, as well as a link to the old video where I made one of the block in the wood. So I hope you like this. Um, something a little different. If you'd like to see something like this in the future, let me know. I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Now I feel like I'm on Sesame Street because I'm counting really big numbers. Kinda. Slowly. Really, really. Slowly. Did it change yet? No. Oh, no, wait a little longer. <laughs>